Hi everyone, I'm Anthony DeMauro, and you're tuned in to Ranters Insider, right here on Sports Rants TV, and as always, courtesy of SportsRants.com. Well, we took a little bit of a two-week hiatus, but we're back and ready to roll. And with all that sports talk right on tap, I want to let you know how you can interact with me and the show. And there's a couple of ways to do so. First things first, I love Twitter, you love Twitter, so let's connect on Twitter. Give me a follow at Anthony DeMauro is the handle. Don't forget you can also follow Sports Rants with at Sports Rants. Rants is spelled with a Z. And you can also follow some other new Twitter rec- accounts related to Sports Rants. One of them is Sports Rants Women, which you can follow at Sports Rants W. Remember, Rants is spelled correctly in this one, so no Z needed. Sports Rants W. And the same goes for our new account for gaming at Sports Rants Game. So keep a lookout for both of those social media accounts, all the great content that they'll be producing. And don't forget to give them a follow. And you can also come on over to SportsRants.com, create a fan profile absolutely free. And then connect with me and engage with other sports fans on our social media community. All right, first things first, I want to talk about the topic basically circulating the sports headlines and on the tip of everybody's tongues. And it's Major League Baseball and their handling of PEDs and the upcoming impending suspensions of many major leaguers and to top that list off Alex Rodriguez of the New York Yankees and Ryan Braun of the Milwaukee Brewers. Here's my rant. I hope Major League Baseball gets served a heavy dose of reality in this. Although I applaud the efforts and the aggressive tactics of Major League Baseball, there has to be some legal ramifications here. There has to be. Because they're threatening Alex Rodriguez, who has never, prior to this, been caught cheating with the testing system in place with Major League Baseball. It's important to keep that in mind. The same thing can be said with Ryan Braun. Prior to these reports coming out, he hadn't tested positive for using steroids using Major League Baseball's drug testing system. Now, that could change when all this new information comes out, but I'm handling I'm speaking about the information that is currently circulating. There's no prior proof that either Alex Rodriguez or Ryan Braun had failed a drug test. But yet, Major League Baseball, who has outlined its standards and its punishments for repeat offenders, first-time offenders, and multiple offenders, wants to skip over all of that because they feel like they were lied to. Well, simply because players cheated your system. And might I remind Major League Baseball, this system of PEDs and this culture of PEDs is your fault. You created this monster. Therefore, you deal with the repercussions and the ramifications of this culture. Now, I'm in no way justifying or validating what either Ryan Braun or Alex Rodriguez have done or have been suspected of doing. All I'm saying is, the way Major League Baseball is approaching this is as as if they had no part in the culture. Bud Selig recently came out and said, well, baseball's the cleanest it's ever been. Well, do you have proof of that, Bud Selig? Because you're one of the last sports to get on the PED drug testing board, bandwagon. You've been the last sport to kind of embrace it, and you had the biggest problem of it. And it... For a sport that is so steeped in tradition and statistics and its history, your culture that you created and you profited from has tainted that history. So I'm kind of rooting for the players here because, yes, I think they should be suspended, but I think to quickly come out and drop an iron fist on them can bring a whole bunch of legal ramifications back on Major League Baseball. If you want to clean up the issue that you yourself created by dropping a nuclear bomb, so to speak, on everything, clear it out and start over, well, the union should stop and support the players. And for the union to come out and say they're going to support Major League Baseball, I like that because I think a lot of the time unions protect players a little bit too much, especially in cases where they are clear violators of rules and regulations. I also question the union, which makes money off the players not doing their job. Listen, I worked in a union before. 
I worked when I when I worked for UPS. We were in a union, and regardless, your your union dues pay for the union to back you up. I don't know if that's the same thing in sports, but I'm assuming. So, wouldn't your wouldn't your duty be to protect your player as best as possible when they're paying you to do so? I would think so. So, let's not kid ourselves, folks. Alex Rodriguez and Ryan Braun have a boatload of money and a buttload of money to spend on legal defenses and tearing down Major League Baseball. So while I applaud Major League Baseball's aggressive approach, well, tread lightly, tread carefully, and be careful because the backlash could expose even more about Major League Baseball than Major League Baseball is ready to handle. And that is my rant in Major League Baseball. Now let's move on to something else. And that something else is Major League Baseball, which is gearing up to the second half of its season. And the All-Star game is actually a little bit exciting. I mean, whoever thought we'd see three nothing shutout? Mariano Rivera getting the MVP. I love the gesture. The All-Star game, home run derby, Cespedes starring in that. His monstrous, like almost record-setting home runs. You gotta love that. And it was a game that highlighted the youth in baseball. And I love this. This is a story baseball should be focusing on. You sell Puig of the Dodgers, although he didn't make the all-star team, you gotta love that story. And there's a lot of young stars like Puig, Mike Trout, I mean, Bryce Harper. There's a lot of young stars in the league that are starting to make their names. And you gotta love the excitement surrounding this because for a while, we kind of had a void in baseball some up-and-coming superstars. We had virtually a small small pool of players to take that next step well this all-star game certainly highlighted a lot of those young up-and-coming players but there's one player in particular I think in the second half of the season we should keep an eye on Miguel Cabrera of the Detroit Tigers yes the triple crown winner of last year he has another crack at triple crown again this year and although he trails in home runs to one Chris Davis of the Baltimore Orioles it's, argu it's an argument to be made that Miguel Cabrera is having a better season this year than he did last year, and that's scary. Now, Tim McCarver on a Fox broadcast, who's known for his crazy rants, said Miguel Cabrera is approaching territory of the top 10 hitters in baseball history. I don't agree with that sentiment, but I don't think he's way, way off base with make making that statement. Miguel Cabrera's production is unprecedented unprecedented in this modern age of baseball. We haven't seen it. And let's just take the modern age of baseball for the past 20, 25 years. We haven't seen hitters like the, with this production of Miguel Cabrera. Really, look at his two seasons. He could be putting together the best back-to-back -back seasons we've seen in a long time, if ever, in Major League Baseball, and it's not getting talked about. We're talking about the home run still, Chris Davis. And this is not a slight on Chris Davis of the Baltimore Orioles, who seemingly is doing everything the right way, and seemingly is on pace to challenge the home run record and surpass it. I still think that with the PED issue being addressed, we as fans have a responsibility, well, to get away from that phrase, chicks love the long ball, you know? The home run, the obsession with it. And we should put more stock in the things Miguel Cabrera is doing from a statistical standpoint. Again, not that the discredit what Chris Davis is doing, but if we start looking at the things Miguel Cabrera is doing, which is an all-around game, I think we'll see that being recognized more, that being valued more, and that being appreciated more. So people and young players coming up in the game will focus more on stuff like that. So again, Miguel Cabrera is my early favorite for the most valuable player award in the AL. And I think he's on pace to have a better season than he had last season. And that's scary. That's scary. So it'll be interesting to see. I think Miguel Cabrera, Cabrera's season is the story out of the AL with the subplot being Chris Davis and the Baltimore Orioles, all those home runs he's sending out of the park. And in the National League, it's certainly the Pittsburgh Pirates, who I'm pulling for. I'm pulling for the Pirates. And I know in the media you're supposed to be biased and, you know, you're supposed to be subjective. But in all honesty, 
I'm rooting for the Pittsburgh Pirates, who are on pace to finally have a winning season and hit the playoffs, something they haven't done in well over two decades. The fan base deserves it, that organization deserves it, and most of all, that team deserves it. So they're my story coming out of the NL. Yourself, Puig is definitely on, uh, one of those stories coming out of the NL. And that's what I have to say about the Major League Baseball season. So if you guys agree with me, rant with me at Anthony tomorrow on Twitter. Or come on over to SportsRants.com and post your rants there. Now let's move on and answer some fans. Welcome to Fan Mail, and in Fan Mail, I like to answer your Twitter questions. All sports related, of course, but each and every time I do Ranchers Insider, I ask you to ask me a sports related question. If I choose to answer it on the show, you get an on screen shout out. So let's roll right into it and start looking at these tweets. Alright, at John Farah13 asks me Will Major League Baseball ever add the replay technology we see in other sports? They're gradually getting there. It's going to take them a while. And you know what? I hope so. So the fan in me says, I hope so. Yes. But I'm not so sure. They've been reluctant. They've been slow moving on this. And they've been stubborn. And, you know, it's kind of funny. It goes back to my PED argument. Baseball's so worried about its integrity with PED, but yet the integrity of anything else in the, league, in the game, especially... Uh, especially when it comes to its umpires and officiating, they're slow on. I think it needs to be universal. If you're going to be taking a step forward, take it, take a step forward collectively. Don't just address one area of the game that needs fixing. Address it all. An instant replay is one of it. And I, for one, if you heard any of my rants on the radio, I am not a big fan of umpires. And some of the way these umpires make it about them. So I think you take some of that power away from umpires and you kind of chip that ego down. And by having instant replay, you're admitting, yes, our umpires aren't perfect and they do need assistance. I think you knock some of that ego down and I think that'd be a good thing. So to answer your question, yes, but I don't see it getting there fast enough. Thank you for the question. All right, at Bear TH asks me, who's going to the World Series? Well, uh, uh Tough to tell, really tough to tell. Um, in the AL, I like the Orioles. I, I do, I like the Orioles. I called them in the beginning of the season. I'm gonna stick with it. So I like the Baltimore Orioles. The pitching hopefully will holds up. They just seem like a complete all around team. Although I'm not sleeping on the Texas Rangers who can make another playoff run and nobody's talking about them really. I mean seriously, isn't it always a team we're not heavily talking about that makes the World Series? Traditionally, isn't that normally how it goes? So I see that with the Texas Rangers. In the National League, hell, I'm rooting for them, so I'm going to call them. Pittsburgh Pirates World, World Series. Call me crazy, but you could be calling me a genius if I'm absolutely right in the end. It's a little bit out there, but I'm going to go with it. So thank you for the question. All right, at FamousK56 asked me, Will the Patriots transition to a more ground-and-pound team with so many new receivers? Tom is still Tom, but offense is complex. You answered the question right there, buddy. Tom Brady is still Tom Brady. Therefore, Tom Brady really doesn't need to change his offensive game. He makes other players better. He kind of has the Steve Nash in him. You know how Steve Nash plays? Um, talk about my Phoenix years. You can't really take that small sample size with the Lakers last season because he wasn't really playing um, 100% all season. Nash makes everybody play better. Tom Brady makes everybody play better. So, with that being said, I don't see much of a fallout for the play of the Patriots, and why ch why break anything that isn't why try to fix anything? Excuse me, that isn't broken. There's no reason to. And the Patriots, who made the AFC Championship game last year, I was there to see it in Foxborough. Well, they were a game away from the Super Bowl, and before that, they were in the Super Bowl. So their offensive system works. So I don't see them changing it too drastically. And I think the other players they have there, their coach, so you got to take into a fact that Bill Belichick is one coach that gets the best out of every player, no matter the situation. If they can win with quarterback Matt Castle, well, they can win with some backup receivers that we've never heard of. Thank you for the question. All right, at Jake Golfio 3 says, what's your most memorable sports moment you couldn't pull your eyes away from? There's a couple. You ready? 
there's a couple. Michael Jordan, uh, and his last one was Utah. Oh, that game, uh, sorry, the championship clinching game against Utah, that entire fourth quarter, could not pull my eyes away from it. That was great. Um, I, I think this year, speaking, the game I couldn't keep my eyes off of, that game won between the Boston Bruins and the Chicago Blackhawks, that went almost entirely all in line. <laughs> and that whole series, actually, screw it. That whole entire series, I could not take my eyes off of. The first moment in sports that I couldn't take my eyes off. Um, and, and remember, I started um, very young. I was a wrestling fan, I was a football fan. Watched a lot of wrestling. I think what I couldn't take my eyes off of was WWE, and I, I want to say the match I couldn't take my eyes off of was, I want to say, Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior. That just captivated me when I was so young seeing it at WrestleMania 6. Uh, I wasn't there, but I remember watching it. Uh, that just captivated, captivated me. And then another thing I couldn't take my eyes off of was any of Shawn Michaels' matches. So, uh, I know there's a lot of moments in between every Yankee playoff run, but those moments really stand out to me. Thank you for the question. All right, at the Joel MG ask me, which player recently released in the NBA will make the biggest impact next year for a team? Marcus Camby, Drew Gooden, or Mike Miller? I'm going to scratch Marcus Camby off that list because he's been injured, and I don't know what you're going to get out of Marcus Camby. They're going to use him in Toronto, but to what extent? Mike Miller, he just got amnestied by the Miami Heat. Again, I don't know how much you're going to get out of Mike Miller if he continues to play. A lot of speculation out there that he's going to retire. And so I'm going to say Drew Gooden, who is a journeyman, but pro is productive wherever he goes, and he scores points, gets rebounds. Uh, he, he does a little bit of everything. So I'm going to say Drew Gooden. And thanks for the NBA question. A little bit unique. I like that. So thank you for participating. And in our final question... At Wet's JG asks me, with Jones Drew fantasy story, do you see the commission banning all active players or coaches from participation in any fantasy league? Well, in theory, that sounds great, but how can they possibly police it? They can't even police social media. Well, how do you expect them to police fantasy leagues? And I don't think players should have to steer away from it now there's certain situations now this is assuming maurice jones drew's story is true about greg jones kind of uh screwing him a little bit and during the game kind of laying off or whatever the story was it's worth reading and then again uh, i just don't know how you police this i don't know if it's a true problem if he's just blowing smoke creating a news story who knows so and, and is this just an isolated incident so i know a lot of Players and athletes play fantasy sports, and why the heck not? If they're not gambling with it, which is per a lot of per league rules, um, and then there's no harm, no foul, in my opinion. And if it affects something on the field, well, they're going to get called out, and I just think it might be more of an isolated incident than something widespread. Because in the end of the day, you think your teammates are going to be too happy with you to botching plays for fantasy football leagues? I don't think that's going to go over too well in the last so thank you for participating. And that's going to wrap up another edition of Ranters Insider. Thank you so much for tuning in to Sports Rants TV and the show. Remember to follow me on Twitter, at Anthony tomorrow, And remember to come on over and create a profile on SportsRants.com. Also, guys, remember, I got two, actually three radio shows now. Wow, I talk a lot, don't I? Uh, you can catch me Monday nights on my own show, the Anthony tomorrow Show on Sports Rants Radio, kicking off at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can catch me on the Ranton and Raven Show with Katie Mitchell. And I'm back at it again on Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Chantel Jordan on Not Your Average Sports Show. In the meantime, folks, until I talk to you next, thank you again for tuning in. Thanks for following me, following me on Twitter and engaging with me. Keep ranting, be kind to each other, and enjoy all the sports talk. And I'll catch you on the flip side.